What's up everyone, Zach Seif here, and today we're gonna to go over what rig I actually used for the Evolution X Summer Tour. So earlier this year, I posted a rig rundown video that if you haven't seen yet, go watch it now before continuing with the rest of this video. And the rig that I described in that video and highlighted extensively never ended up leaving the house. What happened was after our drummer auditions in April, we had five weeks in a row of intense rehearsals with our new drummer, the new lineup, get everything nice and tight, run the tunes, get the medleys underway, and figure out what gear we were gonna bring. As far as amplifiers and pedals go, I ended up never taking the Kemper out of the house. And I will explain why in just a second. But before we go any further, please note that these are just my personal experiences with the gear that I'm about to talk about and describe, and I am in no way, shape, or form affiliated with any of the brands, products, or services that I am about to talk about. These are all my personal opinions and my thoughts on how the gear works in an actual week-to-week -week consistent touring basis. So let's talk about the Music Man Majesty. Now, as I've highlighted many times in my videos, this is one of my most prized possessions. I love this guitar to death. I was able to have it signed in person by John Petrucci himself when I met him back in 2018. And this guitar just has a ton of mojo to it. Unfortunately, it's not the right guitar for Evolution X, and here's why. The pickups on this guitar are direct mounted. Now, for those of you who don't know what it means, Basically, these pickups are screwed directly into the body cavity of the guitar, and they are not adjustable. The other guitars that you've seen me use so far, they have a base plate and a little plastic ring around them, so you can change the height of the pickup. And since we're not always playing a high energy, high output rocking set, the pickups tend to be too hot for most of what we do. Now, one of the features about this guitar that I did use quite a bit was the acoustic piezo system, but since the only song that we're keeping in the set list that will require that is Shallow, I can't justify having this guitar for just one song in the set list, so unfortunately I'm going to be swapping it out for another guitar, which is the Ernie Ball Music Man Valentine guitar. This is the Maroon 5 guitarist James Valentine signature guitar, and this thing has been fantastic. I picked this up before our first gig in September, and the reason why I went for it is because it has a Telecaster style bridge pickup to give me an authentic single coil sound, and it has a Gibson ES335 neck style pickup, which is super warm, cozy for a lot of the stuff that we play. A couple of other features about this guitar is I have an onboard boost if I want to push the single coil a little bit more like a humbucker for something more aggressive in the set, and I can also coil split the neck pickup so that it operates kind of like an actual Telecaster. This guitar weighs about the same as the Vader, has a beautiful roasted maple neck, and the body shape is super comfortable to use on stage, so this will be making it into my fall winter rig. So the main reason that I switched over to Fractal last minute is because I felt that the amp models responded more realistically and I had more control over my overall tone on this unit compared to the Kemper. As you can see, in the Fractal itself, I have complete control over the input gain, the bass, mid, treble, master volume, and I just have access to all the features that the actual amplifier that I'm modeling would have. Whereas with the Kemper, you had a generic treble, middle, and bass, and they didn't respond the same way that the real amp would, right? The point of the Kemper is to capture basically a snapshot of where your knobs are during the profiling process, and then it stores that sound pretty realistically, right? It gets pretty close, but the Fractal just goes more in depth, and I can tweak my tone more to what I'm used to hearing on my real JP2C, which I have. Another benefit to having the Fractal instead of the Kemper is the fact that I'm not stuck to just having four effects before the amp and four effects after the amp, but instead I can make my signal chain as complex and in-depth as I want. I mean, I'm running at least 10 different effects. I have two completely separate outputs, one for the in-ear system and one for an onstage amp or speaker. I have four different reverbs, four different delays, 
I've got tremolo, I've got two different choruses. There's just so much more that I can do with this unit than I ever could with the Kemper. Not only that, this unit was physically smaller, and even though it only appears to have three buttons, each button has a press feature, which I'll show you, where when you press it, it can toggle between two different sounds if you want. When you press and hold, it can give you a different scene, and you can configure these to do nine different things. So I'm not really losing that much flexibility compared to the Kemper. And as much as this unit has been a godsend on the road, I will no longer be using it because Fractal just finally shipped out my FM9 and I received this unit about a week ago and I've been using it ever since. It has nine foot switches, each with three different features. So in theory now I have 27 different switches and toggles that I can assign to any parameter of any effect, amplifier, cabinet, you name it. I have total control over it. This has more processing power than the FM3, which means I can add more effects and more complex signal chains. In theory, I could also run James's bass rig through this unit if we wanted to, because it has separate inputs and outputs that you can configure to do whatever you want. My first gig with this was the wedding that we just recently played, and my live rig has never been better. It runs super smooth, I have no issues with it, and it has the most flexibility that I could ever ask for in a live guitar rig. And last but certainly not least, let's go through what other goodies are in the Pelican case. First and foremost, RAV power bank, 26,800 milliamp hours. I've only had to charge this thing twice this summer, and it will always give my iPhones a full charge no matter where I am, because you never know when you're going to have access to wall power. And especially on weekends where we go from gig to gig, maybe we stay somewhere overnight. If I forget to charge something, or I leave something in the car, or I leave something, you know, backstage, I can charge it in the car and it'll be ready for the following performance. Gaff tape. Don't be cheap. Get yourself a roll of gaff tape and make the stage look pretty. Tie down cables so you don't trip over them, because I know I do. Put your set lists in one place so they stay there, because the audience will try to take them and they'll be kicked around and moved around and get, you know, destroyed and whatnot. Make the stage look nice, use some gaff tape. We were borrowing James's tape all summer, and now that his roll is almost out, I felt that it was my turn to return the favor, so we've got gaff tape ready to go. Toolkit, your gear is going to move around a lot, not just in the car, but also on stage and during the performance. You wanna be able to keep your gear in tip-top shape, so I started with the Ernie Ball Musicians Toolkit and I made some modifications to fit what I do. We've got cleaning cloth, self-explanatory, extra strings. I always have two or three packs with me because you never know when you're gonna break a string. I have broken about five or six strings so far this summer. It just happens. Tuner, self-explanatory for string changes. Got different keys and wrenches of different sizes. These have come in handy not only for my guitars, but also James's bass and the other James's drum set. We've had to make some adjustments. Multi-tool, same idea, screwdrivers, hex wrenches, whatever you need. I've got a screwdriver that also has a flathead on the other side, Phillips on the main, just in case. I've got I've also got a headstock cradle, so if I do have like a bench or flat surface to work on, I can put this down, rest my guitar neck on it, and make adjustments. And then I've got my peg, tool, string cutter, tuner, winder, peg thingy. All right, all these multi-tools really come in handy because instead of having to use three or four separate tools to do one job, you can just have one tool to do the job. Ernie Ball Wonder Wipes. These things are the best. I no longer buy any separate liquids or fretboard cleaners. Just take out the wipe, wipe down the entire fretboard. It'll take all of the crap off of it. That includes blood, sweat, and booze. And then you just throw it out and you're done. Easy, simple. Inside the GTX-01 pouch, I have my new wireless guitar system. I picked up these Sennheiser XS series wireless transmitter and receiver packs and these have been the best wireless unit that I have ever used. There's no batteries, you just charge them. One charge will last me two shows 
and they never fall out of my guitar. I was a little skeptical at first, but these things are the real deal. Now, you'll notice that in my gig vlog about the mountain bar, right, why I perform live, which you can watch up here, I was using the X-Vive U2 wireless system, but had a problem using it where it wouldn't connect in the beginning of the show. That happened three shows in a row, so I had to return that unit because it's just not reliable. I cannot recommend that, but I do recommend the Sennheiser because I've had no issues with them all summer. Additionally, James the bassist also has a set. We've never had any interference problems. They always automatically connect to the matching pair and they're great, just like the in-ear system. Speaking of in-ears, right, upgraded my Galaxy Audio ears to the Sennheiser G4 unit, and these sound great. You know, we use a wireless Behringer mixer to do all of our in-ear mixes, and these packs are super sturdy. Like, if someone threw this at your head, you'd get knocked out. These things are great. They stay on the volume control, is very smooth, very incremental, so you can dial in exactly what you need. These things have been great, the whole band is on them. As for the earbuds themselves, I still have my Shure SE 425s, however I'm probably going to retire these at the end of the year and get custom molds because the hotter stages, the more humid the environment is, they start to fall out of your ears and I've had to press mine back in you know, multiple times during the summer. And the band that locks in the back tends to get loose and run down your back, which then creates less pressure and less friction. And while they are great sounding earbuds, I need something custom fit to my ears so that I can perform better and I can protect my hearing even more. We got the Mono Tick bag. This is going to be my new cable bag so that I can put less wear and tear on the Novation backpack. <laughs> And inside are all the cables that I need for a successful show. I have two of every cable, two quarter inches to connect the FM9 to the power cab, plus a spare. I have two XLR cables because I'm going to start running my rig in stereo, which is awesome. And of course, if anything ever fails, I can just go down to mono and always have a cable ready to go. I've got two power cords. This one is 25 feet because we have played venues where there is no power in the front of the stage and we have to run it in the back of the stage. And I've got two TRS cables for my expression pedal. Now, we're about to go through the most important part of my live rig. Some of you may say, oh, it's obviously your guitars. Some of you may say, oh, it's obviously the amp and the pedal board. It's none of that. None of your gear actually matters unless you look good. And that's where this magic bag comes into play. Let me show you what's in here. Hairspray. Because when you are playing on stage, especially outside or during the summer, and all of this beautiful, lush hair falls in your face and it gets messy and it's distracting, no. Spray, comb it back into place. Not only do you look good, but you can actually perform better because you're not worried about all that hair just kind of being in your face. All right, you get what I mean. Deodorant and breath spray. If you're going to be talking to people between and after sets, reapply, freshen up. All right, you know the deal. No one wants to talk to you if you smell and look like you just played a show. Right, trust me on that. Hand sanitizer, hand lotion. This is pretty self-explanatory. Especially since some of the bathrooms, a little questionable. Most of them don't even have soap. Some didn't even have running water, so hand sanitizer when you're on the road. Hand lotion. Yes, I do think the Japanese cherry blossom does smell good, but that's not why I have it. Sometimes I get dry skin while on the road, especially traveling through all these different environments and whatnot, and sometimes the hand sanitizer can dry out your skin. So not only does it prevent my skin from flaking all over the place, but it also helps me play a little bit better and it does not build up on the guitar strings, which is really cool. Trust me when I say that this is the most important part of the rig, because we all know that looking good is half the battle. In fact, studies suggest that when you look better on stage, the audience perceives you as a better performer and they think you sound better and look better and yeah, you get what I mean. So 
So one last thing that I wanted to point out real quick is the fact that I did switch back to my Pelican Road case. And the main reason why is because I couldn't fit everything that I needed just inside of the Novation backpack itself. Plus the fact that this is on wheels means that it's less strain and wear on my back and I can fit my tripods for doing all my vlogs as well as some other stuff that I couldn't fit in the first place. And that just about wraps up today's video. Be sure to let me know your thoughts about my rig in the comments below. If you subscribe, it'll help me tremendously to reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That would mean so much to me. It would hit the goal that I need to in order to start monetizing the channel, which would be a huge help. It'll help me create more videos and more content to share with all of you. I love the journey that I've been on so far this year. I couldn't have done it without all of your love and support and continuous dedication to the channel. Be sure that you keep on following your dreams. I'll see you all next time.